Mr. Mm -hmm. Nguyen, did you talk to coworkers about what happened to their W-2s when they actually gave the money back? I talked to everybody because, you know, I friendly in the company. I helped out everybody. But we talk like ADB, you know, like work for a team company, right? So team have to sue the ADB first because ADB company work for him. Like I work for you. If I have problem, I have responsible for that. And then he sued me, right? So you know. if, they, if they corrected the tax issue, would you have gone back to work? You know, when I work everywhere, I try to do the, the best. But, you know, that because the problem, I don't think so. Go back to work. You wouldn't you know. have gone back yeah. to work for the plaintiff. I'm, I'm good. The parties are excused while we deliberate in this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you very you much. This courtroom is now in recess. We'll go ahead and exit. Look, this is a situation, I think, where there's a third party who's responsible for this mess that unfortunately isn't here in court. And that was the payroll company who mm -hmm. made this large error and then said to the plaintiff, you fix it. And now the plaintiff is trying to say to their employee, you fix it. Right. If the third party were in here, I'd hold them responsible. But the plaintiff chose to sue the defendant. The defendant is obligated to pay back the money he received. But he's also entitled to be compensated for the fact that it cost him his tax refund. As between the two parties, this is more the plaintiff's fault than it is the defendant. And if the plaintiff does not want to make an issue with their payroll company, then they should be responsible. It should not be this man's burden to go out of pocket $1,200 for the plaintiff's payroll company's mistake. So what I would do, the most fair result in this case, is to render a judgment in favor of the plaintiff for the amount of the lost wages minus the tax refund. Even though the defendant may be able to correct the issue with the IRS, we can't really control that. So I think that that's the most fair result today, given what's happened to this point. I think that's absolutely fair. Well, I think we have a verdict then. We do. This court is again in session. Mr. Guest, Mr. Nguyen, the difficult part of this case for us is that you're both here because of a mistake by somebody else. You know, that's the unfortunate part. And frankly, it's a mistake by a big payroll company that is the real one that could afford to pay for this mistake. So, you know, I wish they were at the third lectern over there. They'd get it from us. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's kind of outside the scope of what we're here to do today. I think as between the two of you, as the employer, as the one who contracted with the payroll company, it's really not fair to place the burden on the defendant to have to navigate the refiling system of the IRS, to have to go in for a refund. He may very well be able to do that. But this was a mistake that essentially, as between the two of you, more fairly falls on you. That, of course, does not mean that you're not entitled to receive back the wages that were overpaid. But we are going to make sure that deducted from that is the amount that would otherwise come out of pocket, even if it's only in the interim, to the defendant. The judgment today for the plaintiff is going to be for the amount of $2,750. That represents $4,002, the overpayment, minus the taxes out of pocket that you've owed of $1,252. So the verdict is unanimous in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $2,750. And this courtroom is adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, I think the judges make the right decision. Um, I, I respect their decision. That reasonable, you know. I do not believe it's fair that someone is going to receive the tax money back. He wasn't a winner. It's not my fault. I don't take money from team account. My account balance was so low and it was hundreds of thousands of dollars I could have cried. <laughs> <laughs>